We've already mentioned that when RAW files are imported into Lightroom, they are stripped of any in-camera presets that may have been applied. So basically, when you're looking at the back of your camera, you're seeing a processed JPEG depending on what criteria you've set in your camera settings. So if you want it punchy or saturated or vibrant or overly sharpened, then all of that is shown as a JPEG preview. When you come into RAW files in Lightroom, you're seeing just the raw data and they can look somewhat uninspiring. And what we did was we produced a, a preset called Import Punch. And what that has done is reduce the exposure, increased highlights, reduced shadows, increased whites, reduced blacks, and then added a bit of clarity, vibrant saturation, and a very mild S curve, in addition to profile corrections being corrected and also chromatic aberration. You can actually apply these during import I think we mentioned that earlier on in the import part of the video that you can say that you want a preset applied. So it means your images will actually brought, be brought into Lightroom with that preset applied, which means you don't have to go through the process of them looking washed out and boring. You can make any presets that you want of your own. So if you don't like this one particularly, you might say, right, I want all my image to be a little bit cooler, or I want them to have a little bit more clarity and a little bit more vibrance and I want my whites to be punched a little bit more and the blacks to be reduced a little bit more. So you generally just want everything to be a little bit more than, than we did. All you need to do is go into your presets, add preset and call it any name you want. My preset, for an example. You can then go into your library and select any image you like. In the develop module, click my preset. And all of a sudden, that image is now given the criteria in the develop module that you specified. You can produce them for anything you want. Cool ethereal, import punch is the one that we did. My preset we've just talked about, punchy landscape. Any preset you want, you can make them and put them into here. Very useful and very much a high speed way of improving the look of batches of images very, very quickly. Noise is a byproduct of a couple of things. One is using higher ISO levels, and the second is underexposure. Probably the latter is of more of an issue for us that, that if images are underexposed, when we try and brighten up the shadow details, we will end up probably introducing noise into our images. If we look at this one that was taken inside a cave, you can open up those shadows quite significantly but you will see that we have introduced artifacts and various little noise artifacts in there. There is, a, in part of the detail panel in Lightroom, there is a noise reduction section. And we have two different types, luminance and color. Luminance is the little bright speckles that we can see. And as we move the slider to the right, you can see we can eliminate those but at the same time, we're also eliminating details. So it is a playoff between getting rid of the noise and producing a beautiful smooth file like we have done um, versus losing all the detail that we had in those shadows. You know, it's a playoff as far as I'm concerned. I tend not to push it much beyond 30, but if it was that important to you, there's nothing to stop you pushing it a lot further than that to get rid of those um, unsightly if the shadows are very important in terms of their tonality. The color slider gets rid of some of the blotchiness. In here we had some little speckles of red and magenta and the color slider, you can be quite aggressive with that and push it all the way across to, to 100. And all of a sudden we're in a situation where we've, you know, we've, we've really got rid of the, the noise in this image. The, we do have an opportunity to retain details, so we can push the detail slider to the right and it will attempt to bring detail back into these areas. So as you can see, noise reduction in Lightroom has got pretty sophisticated um, laterally and we can now take images and scenarios where we didn't think it was possible before. I am very much an advocate of if it's a choice of getting no image at all because you think it's going to be noisy 
or getting something that might look great on the web or even as a big print seen from a distance, I would rather get the image in the can than not take anything at all. Don't forget that we've had grain in black and white and color slide photography for years and years. And if you look at a print made with slide film, it is quite grainy, especially if it was in low light. So by the time you're looking at a print from halfway across a room, you will not be seeing noise. Just think about looking at uh, a billboard down a high street. You look at it from 300 meters away and you're not seeing each massive pixel. So noise isn't something that I would get massively hung up about, but just to let you know that there are ways in Lightroom now to deal with it with the noise reduction panel. Pretty much the last thing I'm going to talk about before we export this image out of here is sharpening. Lightroom in part of the detail panel has a sharpening dialogue area. Now, typically there is a standard amount of sharpening applied. If you have, whatever you do in camera, if you have a preset um, and you, you want your JPEG previews to be sharp and crisp and what have you, then that will all get stripped by the time the raw file comes into Lightroom. No sharpening is brought into Lightroom, but there is a default amount of 25% with a radius of one, detail of 25, and zero masking. That is the default Lightroom uh, setting. And, you know, this image is sharp. I mean, there's no two ways about it that it's already pretty, pretty sharp as it is. But what we want to do is just crisp things up a little bit before we send it out for web. And the main thing I want to discuss here is this masking ability. What masking does, if we hold down the Alt key, we can see that at the zero setting there is no mask. As we move the slider to the right, we're starting to have white areas and black areas. And as with all true masks, white reveals, black conceals. So what it means is that the black areas will not be sharpened. So we're only going to sharpen the white areas. And that typically, this is an edge detection mask. If we move the thing way over to the right hand side, you're stripping the image down to the absolute bare minimum of the most important lines in the frame. So if we take that now off and zoom into 100%, if I move the sharpening slider across the right hand side, we can be quite aggressive with the sharpening amount because none of these smooth areas are actually being sharpened at all and what it means is is that you're just you're literally just sharpening the, the key areas within the frame and all of these smooth water areas are, are remaining completely unaffected so we can move this sharpening slider around as much as we want and the water is barely going to change because it's not being sharpened whereas if we move the sharpening slider around on here some of the more dramatic edges, particularly in this area here, appear to be sharpened. And you do get to the stage where you can start producing a few little halos. Somewhere in between is usually the right type of setting, masking kind of in the middle. And if we hold down that Alt key again, you'll see that, you know, we're going to sharpen these key areas and we're going to ignore most of the smoother areas. And that is sharpening. I mean, it's as simple as that. Is there's there's nothing too much to get hung up about. Um, that is the main the main thing to consider is how much you want to mask, where you want the sharpening to be applied, and where you want it to be ignored. So we've travelled quite a journey through Lightroom initially from the library, which was where we imported our images of our cameras and through the develop module and all the different parameters that we can change and process our images to convert those raw files into something that we want to share with the rest of the world. The final stage that we're going to cover in this series of videos is exporting. And the most simple way to do things is to go to file export and it opens the export dialogue um, panel. And the first thing we want to talk about is where is it going to be exported to? So most commonly it's going to go to hard drives, although of course you can specify email or to go to CDs. The export location is a specific location 
and my choice is going to be in this case it's just going to go to my desktop you can choose to put it in subfolders if you check that box I can have uh, I can create a folder called Nepal which will which will appear on my desktop the file naming you can it will stay as it is or you can specify you want to change a file name we're not talking about video file settings now for images that are going onto the internet JPEG is the best setting it's the best compromise between size and quality we have lots of different options here TIFFs if you're going to export to Photoshop um, or to go to a printer or something like that but in this scenario JPEG with an sRGB color space which is the one that is best suited for monitors and I usually find that quality of 90% is usually fine. If you have a forum which limits file sizes to say 500 KB, then you can highlight that there. Image sizing is just literally the dimensions in pixels of the longest side. So you can choose to either say width and height where you specify full dimensions or you can just say longest edge for 900 pixels for example y8.net we like images no bigger than 900 pixels so that would be checked for that output sharpening is typically you can go for screen and standard if you are exporting full-sized images for printing for example you can even specify whether you want to print it on matte or glossy paper and it will sharpen accordingly finally you can specify whether you want all metadata to be included just your copyright information and this is electronic data that's actually embedded in the file I would normally just stick all metadata in there as a default and that is it when I click export a little dialogue appears up there and it says task completed and that image is now on my desktop at 900 pixels wide and that is what exporting is all about thank you very much for watching